Hi, this is Anita from Reluctant Low Carb Life. If you've been listening, you know that we believe in three basic things here at Reluctant Low Carb Life. Yes, we believe the low carb lifestyle is the better lifestyle, but you don't have to be 100% low carb. It's basically a lot about eating fresh foods, foods that are not all type processed, foods that help you feel full longer, so you have more satiety, so you don't have to eat as much, and fitness. I want to talk a little bit this month a bit about fitness and about why fitness is so essential and why fitness is a part of our trifecta of health. If you were looking to build a very good fitness plan, you would look to put into your fitness plan these principles of overload, progression, and specificity. And let me go first with overload. Overload, the principle of overload is basically as it seems, is that for your body to improve, it must be subject to stress beyond its current capabilities. That's why, you know, a lot of times they say, like, if you're going to walk, that you should try to walk fast and slow, then fast and slow, and push your body so you can hardly breathe. That will help you to be able to improve your fitness than if you just keep walking the same amount or the same distance every single day. The idea is to change, is to challenge your body, is to challenge your body in some way so that you can be able to go faster, go further, and to build up your capability and your capacity. You know, in strength training, for example, overload can be achieved by increasing the amount of weight. You know, let's start, you start with, you know, uh, you bench press 50 pounds for 10 reps. Then, you know, by applying overload, you could try to do, you know, 55 pounds and push into 12 reps. You know, so, or, you, you know, you increase the reps, increase the weight. You can do that with your strength training, and that will help you to be able to have a sense of, you know, have some overload in your strength training. In cardiovascular exercise, this can be, for example, if you typically jog for 20 minutes at a moderate pace, then you can increase the duration to 25 minutes, or you can incorporate intervals of faster, like walking, jogging, walking, jogging, walking, jogging. There was um, someone I knew that, um, that did a running thing, running exercise, believe that anyone could run. And she would have people start first with just do, okay, 10 steps walk. Maybe the next day you do 12 steps walk, 12 steps walk. You know, and then the next day you do, you know, 15 steps walk. You know, that each, you know, you build and you progress and build upon it. That is basically, you know, working the overload with, with your body. Flexibility and mo- mobility is you can stretch beyond your you know, comfort zone. You can you know, not you know, do exactly the same stretches, but have other stretches which will build your mobility. Some of the benefits of overload is that basically it helps your body to be able to improve. And then over time, your body will be able to adapt. Going back to the weights, you know, maybe this time it's 50 pounds, maybe it's 55 pounds, and maybe soon it's 60, 65 you know, so your body then is adapting, you know, to that weight. So you keep increasing it. So, you know, this is why overload is important, that whenever you exercise, think about what can you do to get yourself to go faster and further and to push yourself each time you exercise. Progression is very similar to overload, but not exactly the same. Progression is about the gradual increase in exercise intensity over time. So like gradual increases is by you know, gradually increasing the load. For example, if you're weightlifting, you might start with a lighter weight and increase it as you become stronger. In running, you might start with a shorter distance and gradually increase your mileage. You know, progression also involves varying the type of exercises you do. Not only helps in preventing boredom, but it also helps to be able to challenge different muscle groups. You know, whenever you're exercising, you want to have, you want to, you want to be able to challenge different muscle groups and energy systems. For example, you know, having some forms of cardio, such as cycling, swimming, and rowing can provide a comprehensive cardio workout. Periodization is a structured approach, you know, where you can, each phase can focus on a different aspect, such as, you know, building endurance, increasing strength, honing specific skills, that this method can help you, you know, systematically to become stronger. Progression is essential for sustained um, improvement. Without it, the body will quickly adapt to the same routine, and this will sort of lead to a plateau in your performance. 
This is why you might see people that walk the same every day. Yes, you know, walking is good for you, but they don't increase their walking. They're, they're, you know, they're walking the same distance. They're walking the same pace. It's, you know, it's still good exercise, but they are not working the principles of overload or progression. And it's, they're not, you know, improving their fitness or their health as much as they could if they had those principles in mind. The next one is specificity, which means that the body adapts to specific demands placed upon it. In other words, the type of training you do should be aligned with your specific goals. And this is crucial to ensuring that your training is effective and relevant to your desired outcomes. One would be like, you know, skills development. If your goal is to improve a particular skill, then your training should include exercises that directly relate to the skill. For example, a basketball player should incorporate drills and enhance shooting, dribbling, and other things like that. Swimmers should do swimming drills. That's, you know, one of the things every, every time when I swim, I do some swimming drills. So swimmers should be doing swimming drills. Their um, different activities can rely on different, you know, energy systems. For example, a marathon runner, you know, needs to use the aerobic system while a sprinter, you know, relies upon an anaerobic. So they need to be able to target their training for different ways according to what their needs are. And also could be specific groups. Like for example, if you have bad knees or other things like that, you might want to do, you know, exercises that can specifically target or help improve that part of your body. Some of the ba you know, important part of that is that you're, you know, is that you, it prevents you from wasting your time on exercises that aren't going to benefit you for exactly what you are looking to do. You know, that's why you see again, like, you know, a lot of, you know, Olympic athletes, you know, if they're swim, they're going to spend a lot of time in the pool. Yes, but they're also going to spend time on land doing weights and other things because of this right here, where it's going to help them to be able to build their, their system. So if you are looking for an exercise program or you're going to make your own program, then, you know, the things that you should do is you should incorporate these three aspects into your uh, program. You should, you know, look at things and say, what can I do to push myself? How can I make progress? And, you know, what can I, do, what can I specifically do that's going to help me to become better in what my goals are? If you are working with a coach or a trainer, this is exactly what the coach or trainer should be doing for you. If you're working with a program, you have like an app or some type of program, like I have my swimming program, my you know, my swim pro, this is exactly what my program does for me when I'm swimming. It basically, you know, it, you know, I, I swim some at a regular distance. It gives me some drills where you are working on your form. It also um, gives me some drills where you're trying to go faster and faster and faster. And then, you know, it gives me a time to be able to slow down or other things so I can build my strength up while I'm swimming. So that is exactly the type of program that you want with any type of exercise program you're looking at. I'm, um, I, put in, I put some practical examples in here into my blog post, and I'm going to put the description in. It's basically principles of a good fitness plan, overload, progression, and specificity. So if you're interested in this, read this. If you're looking to improve your fitness and saying like, look, you know, I'm walking every day, but I'm just walking the same distance. What can I do? You know, maybe you can add a heel and, you know, go up a heel into your walking. Maybe you can, um, you know, add something else in that's new that's going to force you to be able to somehow change up a bit of what you're doing and then see how that works for you. Consistency and dedication are the key with any type of exercise program. And as we mentioned before, you know, exercise programs like fitness and health and other things, it's slow progress. It's not an easy progress. This is not an easy thing to do, but it is well worth it if you can start doing it. And if you can't afford a trainer, you don't have to have a trainer. Read the blog post, get some ideas and try it out. So this is Anita from Reluctant Low Carb Life. We hope you've enjoyed this and that you'll join us on this journey. Together, we're going on this journey for better health. We hope that you will join with us and be part of this community. Subscribe, like us, become part of our channel. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or comments. And just thank you so much for being here and joining with us. Mm -hmm.